Yeah, 300 games going strong, beautiful pass. Look at the leg strength, unbelievable. <laughs> Chad Boster. Chad. This will be Chad's goal. Someone said, hey, go somewhere earlier, then go to yellow. 
Ted's point. Point win to Lincoln South in the reserves match up against uh, Mallee Park at Centenary Oval. Uh, Western Air Football League uh, currently underway. Uh, I can tell you that in the reserves match uh, or in the B grade final score was Sejuna 5 10 40 defeating Thevenard. Two goal for 16. We do have umpires at the ready. The players are just moving slowly into their final positions uh, as we await the opening bounce of this match between Marble Range and Tasman Imperial in the Port Lincoln Football League uh, here at Wongaree Oval. Umpire at the ready. <coughs> Excuse me. Just getting rid of the uh, last cobwebs from the throat as we gear up for this match. Players are now in position. Umpire looking to both ends of the ground. The boundary umpires are in position. And ball is now raised in the air by the debutant umpire in Scott McDonald. He moves in and we are underway here at Wongari. Tap out one by Stoll for Tasmans. And Daniel Minnie picks it up away to Billy Bias on the hand pass and he fires it straight in. And that's a strong mark taken very early on. Being held on to, no, they're gonna play on here and it's Kyle Castley throwing it onto the left boot. Going, at it, going out to the left side, sending his teammate on the chase in Tom Charlton. And that ball is sitting, 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 full falls just inside the boundary line. Marble Range back with it, kicking backwards. I'm not quite sure why that is, why you wouldn't just hand pass. And I think that's Schreiber moving onto it now. Onto the left boot, going in towards the goal square. It bounces, bounces. Away. That was Wolford, the Ruckman. And did. Was there a touch off the hands? No, it is going to be a free kick to Tasman Imperial for last touch. Marble Range certainly uh, showing their intent early, very dominant uh, as they uh, get into their attack. Uh, Tasman did Wolford uh, comfortable out right there already? Get a little bit... Uh, little cleaner uh, with their possessions uh, as they come out of the back half. And they move it away to that There's right a bloke who can play. Stoll was brilliant last Marble year's Marble grand final. Line. His injury uh, cost Tasman's their shot at winning the Premiership. They certainly gave it a good shot, unlucky to lose really. Injury to Stoll, injury to Cox. It's going to be Lachlan Jennings' first there. Wasn't taken high, and umpire says no. Tasman Imperials, they want the free kick. Umpire says no free paid, and we're going to have a ball up. Around about 45 metres away, maybe even 40 make it from the southern goal here at Wongari Oval. Tap down one by Marble Range again, trying to hand pass to advantage. They do, but the ball goes to ground, and it's a right foot snap from the pocket, and the goal umpire declares it away to the right-hand side for just one point. So that is the first score on the board for the afternoon between Marble Range and Tasman Imperial, Curtis of Sales and Service. Brad Sports. Masters to bring it out. He was brilliant last year's grand final. His first half on Tyne and Keeley was Superb. They certainly are. Marble Ranger picked up the loose putt, loose ball and they have it just outside the forward 50 and that kick, oh, right into the bread basket. And I think that's Proud out there who did very well to take that one as it got fired in straight at his belly. He goes out to that right wing and that's a solid mark taken. Good spoiling effort coming in from Price Marshall, but standing tall, that looks like Stoll out there and looking to play on now and they do towards that right wing and they continue down that right wing and that ball will trickle out of play. Chase Tucker couldn't run it down and it's off hands and it will be a throw in right opposite our commentary position here at Wongari Oval. Yeah, good mark there by uh, Stoll, and, and they've just got to be uh, cleaner with their possession, uh, Tasman. They, they've just made it past the, uh, the halfway uh, on the outer side there, so if they can uh, find a way through and break down uh, Marble Rangers' defence, uh, there'll be a chance to uh, get inside their attack as they go forward now. Stoll brought down the throw in, threw it onto the left boot, bit of an up and under, no one was able Bitty to... Bitty bias. Nope, not quite. He'll get it back though. It looks as though the man was taken without the ball, I think. But we are going to have the final result. Uh, Rangers will get it back though. Brock Davis, that looks like. Brock Davis, that is. Range, just outside his own 50 metre arc. He's told to play on by the umpire, so he bombs away to that left wing, flying high in the pack were Tasman Imperials. They couldn't bring the ball down and we'll have yet another throw in from that far touch line, from that far boundary line, sorry. Four minutes gone on the Ace Merchandise and Apparel time clock and it's Marble Range one point 
Tasman Imperial yet to score. Tasman, uh, no chance of that contest. It was, it was three on one there and uh, ball uh, spilled to the outer side. So uh, a 50-50 ball and uh, Marble Range uh, once again uh, looking to go inside their attack. In the meantime, we do have a free kick going the way of Marble Range. They play on quickly and the ball sits nicely. Max Black falling into the midfield, taking the mark. And now Black looks up. He decides to keep it low again, going short. And they're just playing a little bit of keep away at the moment here, Marble Range. Looking to no, in fact, they go over the top looking for a marking contest, and they don't get it. Quick hand pass away. Here's an opportunity. And the opening goal of the afternoon goes to the man returning from the ACL injury. And don't they love it, Marble Range? They are all over Todd Slade as he slots the first goal of the afternoon on the Curtis's Sales and Service scoreboard. And it is Marble Range 1-1-7. Seven, leading Tasman Imperial yet to score. Yeah, good girl there to uh, Slade, and uh, and great to see him uh, back from serious injury. Um, they just they just work in packs, Marble Range. Uh, you know, the right hand side, just inside 50. Uh, good kick there from uh, Slade, just to uh, show their intent, uh, Marble Range, as they uh, as they push on. Coach Boyd West entering the fray as Lachlan Jennings leaves the field. Of course, we do it all this afternoon. Thanks to our number one ticket holder, Macca's Port Lincoln, the home of local footy. Daniel Minnie, a little bit of a set to out there at the moment as the umpire declares his path coming back out and he puts the ball in the air. Tap out one there again by Stoll. Marble range first down to it. Looking to, they won't sock it off the ground as a matter of fact. Hand pass back in. It's picked up by Minnie who hand passes to no one. Tansel's going to get there first for Tasman Imperial. He throws it onto the left boot. It's a wonky old kick but Josh Seal nonetheless is going to be able to take the mark. Almost smack in front of our commentary position. He kicks short. It's a boy. Man in front. That looked like Brock Davis was it? A little bit of a set two. Just a little bit of a how you going. Uh, nice pleasantries afterwards because that was a real whack to the back of the head from Brent Harris. And it looks as though, are we going to have the, yeah, it's going to be referred downfield because that was a late shot. To take the 50 metre penalty, I think. Thank you very much. Now for Tasman's, it all started with uh, Hybish with a, uh, a pretty strong tackle and then um, it all sort of, uh, Emotion sort of spilt over there, but uh, Marble Range uh, just... Uh, Billy Bias, tackled to the ground. That's right, and Boyd West taking the free kick and taken to ground by Billy Bias, and the umpire says, you're gone. So Bias gives up the ball, and Tasman Imperial work it away to their right halfback flank, and that looks like uh, might even, might be Pride, Proud out there, or is that Toby Wright? I'm not quite sure, can't quite see that far, but the kick falls short, and... I'm just waiting to yeah it looks as though it's a free kick paid rather than the mark so now marble range will look to play on here and they go long off the left boot inside forward 50 sending the man on the chase and that ball will in fact we're coming back for the free it looked as though man was being held without the ball so we are going to see a free yeah. kick no you're right mate you go I'm just chilling out so it might be keely out there in fact, it's Schreiber. So Schreiber from the left forward pocket. Big Shrive. Has been known to kick a goal in the past. In fact, he might from there, Glenn Schreiber. Virtually no wind out there, so he may, have, may as well have a ping. He, go, he looks to centre, and it's off hands from Tasman, falling to the bottom of the pack. It's a left foot snap, and it's away. And in fact, it misses everything. So the free kick will go the way of Tasman Imperial. And on the scoreboard, it is 1-1-7. Brett Masters, bring it out. It does look like a bit of frustration there. Son of a Port Neal legend. Here they come, Rangers. Just... They uh, have, have a few shots of the... Uh, at the sticks. Guy Hutchinson brought the ball down off the kick, off the free kick, and wasn't able to get it accurate on target. So another behind goes up on the scoreboard. Marble Range one two eight. Tasman Imperial no score. We have played eight and a half minutes on the Ace Merchandise and Apparel time clock. Your local merchandise supplier, Ace Merchandise and Apparel. And the kick in is a stinker and it sits. And that's an even worse kick from Marble Range. But they do go back inside forward 50. Hand pass away. Here's Mini. Hand passing to no one. Tasman Imperial with it. And it looked as though, and I think the umpire's called a throw. But it's the central umpire rather than the umpire in that 
50 metre arc. So now Tasman Imperial will go short. That's a good spoil coming in from Daniel Minnie again. He has been everywhere so far, Minnie. Absolute terrier on the ball, not giving Tasman Imperial a moment's peace. As the ball shoots out the back, Marble Rain's trying to pick it up off the ground. It's just sitting there, sitting there, shoots out the side. Now Tasman Imperial bringing it away, and it's a hand pass over the boundary line, and, or is it in, in fact a kick? It might actually be a free kick. Yes, it is gonna be a free kick, going the way of Marble Range. Uh, they decide to go short, still outside the forward attacking 50. Calling play, oh, nicely done around Brent Harris. He had no chance in kicking to the top of the goal square. It's off hands at the back. And a free kick to Boyd West. Yeah, free. And the free kick will go the way of, who's got that? That's Boyd, Boyd West. West. From smack in front. So Boyd West shouldn't have too many problems adding Marble Rangers' second goal. The captain steps up. Boyd West coming in now from 20 metres, only kicking from about 15 out, and he goes smack down the middle. So Boyd West, second goal of the afternoon for Marble Range. Curtis of Sales and Service scoreboard has Marble Range 2 2 14, leading Tasman's no score. The radio and the TV's got out, and Netball looks like it's got one, one game. They're going to play one game. One to go. At three, 10 minutes' time. Might get some footage, yeah. Might get some footage of that. And yeah, probably biggest crowd we've had here since that COVID when we played way backs, and I reckon it'd be as good as that. I don't know, it's a bit hard to tell. Yeah, and the lads out here. Ten and a half minutes elapsed on the Ace merchandise and apparel time clock. Marble range by 14. Here's Scotty, our new umpire, first game today of A grade. And he has awarded Jed Wolford a free kick. Very confidently, may I say. And Jed very confidently hits his man. Really simple there. Disappointing effort, I've got to say. Marking up there from Marble Range. Now, I'm not sure whether this one's going to make the distance or not. And there's a few players moving around. Keeley is going to line up. And in he comes. He's on about a 45 degree angle, kicking from 45. Keeps it reasonably low, and it's out to the left-hand side for just the one point, moving the score along to 2-3 Marble Range, leading Tasman Imperial yet to score. Good strong kick, just uh, just a ways to the right there. So uh, Tasman's again, uh, another chance to uh, get out of their back half. Uh, Collins uh, trying to work it out. So uh, good opportunity here to uh, try and get some ascendancy forward, uh, Tasman Imperials. Marble Range back with it. They hand pass forward and the kick from Todd Slade looking into the forward line. And that mark, is that held? Is it's that not held? paid. It's big shrive. It's good effort. Wasn't really quite there. Good appeal though. Obviously plays a bit of cricket. Chopping at the arms, but the boundary umpire told to throw in, and he does. Stoll bringing it down. Is he going to be able to get it away? No, he can't. He's actually chopping the arms. Uh, illegal these days. A lot of defenders like myself relied heavily on the old chop back in the day. Stoll brings it down again. He gets boot to ball, but that is smothered three ways from Sunday. Sitting at the bottom of the pack. Tasman Imperial on it. Taking the ball to the ground is Nathan Frost. That ball is not coming out and the umpire will call for yet another Stoll ball. Stoll was working overtime there, but just could not find a way out. Schreiber um, trying to work it forward there for Marble Rangers. They uh, look to go into the, the attack again. And Billy Bias nearly. Ooh. Max Black, he goes around, he goes through. Tries to go through one too many. <laughs> Looks like Jackson Bennett, very poor. So it will be a last contact free kick going the way of Tasman Imperial. Uh, we have, we're just looking at the Ace Merchandise and Apparel time clock. 13 minutes gone in the opening term. 2-3-15 Marble Range, Tasman Imperial, no score. See Brocky there, yeah. just, just about, that's all yours. They're working very over, very over time to uh, you know, try and get some ascendancies forward, but just nothing is uh, really working for them at the moment. Nothing's really connecting for them. So at some point, you know, the, you know, the frustrations will continue to boil over. 
Todd Slade entering forward 50 and the kick didn't go anywhere so Tasman Imperial were able to clear it. Marble Range bringing it back inside forward 50 now. And it's a bit of a mongrel ball, hand pass away and Tasman's are going to clear it out to that right side. Good spoil coming in from behind. Marble Range could have got there first. Jordan Clements onto the ball. Now it's a hand pass back. Where do they go? Jed Wolford goes further back. They're going to have to try and settle this one down. Instead they kick to a four on two contest. Oh, good spoil. And Tasman just absolutely flying but they're not going to be able to get clean possession here. Marble Range down to it first. Was that high? Umpire calls play on almost writing the numbers yes indeed and there's going to be a free kick going to Brock right. Davis his dad will be happy with that oh is that Brock play on quickly here and moving away to the right hand side marble range continuing going long and that ball not brought down it's going to be play on Tasman trying to get it out of there right foot and it's a bit of an up and under. Who's going to be able to get there first? No one. It goes straight to ground. Castley now away to Todd Owen. Gets the right foot to it. It's off hands and it's sitting there, sitting there. And Tasman's just hack it clear. I don't know whether that's that good a kick. It's not because it's going to sit there. And now it falls to the bottom of the pack. And umpire called play on and then said that ball was not coming out, so he's going to go for the ball up. Jackson Bennett unable to get that ball clear. Tap out one there by Tasmans, but it's pinballing around. Now they get the ball back, and the kick is smothered off the boot. Billy Byers trying to get there, and he can't. It's socket off the ground, so Tasmans finally get it outside their own defensive 50, and it still doesn't go anywhere. Sits up in the air, mini onto it. Billy Bias now. Bias gets the hand pass back. It's a right footer. It's a bit of a mongrel up and under. Looking to take the mark. Tasmans can't hold on to it. Marble Range spoiling well at the back. They're in trouble here, Tasmans. Is, is the umpire going to call it? No. He says no prior opportunity. So we're going to have a ball up. 15 gone. Ace merchandise and apparel time clock. Marble Range, 2-3-15. Tasmans, no score. A couple of good knocks forward there by Tasmans, but uh, not much more than that. Still, uh, the game has uh, certainly been uh, played in Marble Range's forward 50 at the moment. Uh, they just uh, are able to find players inside the attack as they go forward again. Glenn Schreiber kicking to the centre, finding Archer Purzel. He's about 70. Thinks about another one, but... I don't like his chances. Archer Purzel decides to keep it low. Kicking put it in deep, straight to the Tasman defender. There by Jackson Tansel falling back. They've decided to flood back with their best players here, Tasmans, and they've prevented Marble Range doing too much damage on the scoreboard, but that leaves very few options up front for them. Unfortunately, Brent Harris can't take the mark. When was the last time you saw Brent Harris inside his own 50-metre arc? That's got to be a while. Umpire calls for a ball up just inside the attacking 54 Marble Range, probably about 48 from home. Stoll got under it, won the contest, Marble Range onto it, and it got locked in there, and now it comes away. Tasman's just hack it clear, and that's a good spoil, doing very well. Now they have an opportunity to get the ball out here, Tasman's, and it goes nowhere, unfortunately. Hand pass over the top from Cooper Miller. They keep going back on the attack here, Marble Range, and now Lockie Paik, dummies one, keeps it low. Lockie Paik in towards goal, drifts away to the left-hand side. Another point going the way of the home side, Marble Range, leading 2-4-16. Curtis of Sales and Service scoreboard, Tasman Imperial, no score. Yeah, Marble Range uh, just uh, throwing uh, darts wherever they can at the board at the moment. And, uh, well, Tasman's a uh, good mark there earlier on by uh, Tansel, but uh, just uh, weren't able to connect, uh, trying to move the ball forward. Kick in, comes off hands, goes across the boundary line, around about 60, 70 metres from home, as a matter of fact, at the southern end. So the boundary umpire will be ordered to throw in from that far side of Wongri Oval. Stoll over there already, and he's going to be up against Schreiber. So Wolford's fallen out of the ruck contest as the ball comes down. Schreiber wins the tap down, and the Bit ball goes straight one. to ground in the contest. Umpire will, in fact, the umpire calls it free, I think. And Tasman Imperial will get the ball. So hopefully now they can make something of it and at least get the ball outside their own half because it's gone nowhere so far. Good mark taken on that wing. Well, they get it to halfway. Right there on the outer side, just to try and just get some momentum, Tasman's, because uh, well, they haven't had too many forays past uh, the, the halfway mark at the moment, but uh, here's a good opportunity. Still up high, making the effort. Oh, smothered. From. Kick is smothered. So they're not able to get too far forward, only just into the marble range half of the field. And now the home side pick it up and they go straight back. Oh, dumping tackle there. Umpire says right in the middle of it. no prior opportunity. So we're going to get another ball up. Ace Merchandise and Apparel Time Clock shows 18 minutes gone in the opening term. And it's marble range by 16 points. Waiting for umpire McDonald to put the ball in the air. And he does. Everybody's holding on to everyone. 
and the ball eventually comes away. Who's going to get there first? Tasman Imperial pick up the crumb. Hand pass over the top. Done well there, did Harry Habick. Two advantage. And now That's down. yeah. Oh, that was. <laughs> you don't want Jordan running you down. Billy on Billy. Havick with it. He gets the hand pass away. Nice little dummy there. Good effort from Daniel Gobin. He goes short. Doesn't get all the way. It's Chase Tucker with it. Harry Havick now. Tucker trying to get away. Goes back to Harry Havick. He keeps the kick low. Is it going to sit for Harris? No, it doesn't. In fact, it goes to the back. And now the hand pass away from Harry Izzo. And Marble Range, they're the only ones back there. Cooper Miller with it. And he falls back into his own 50. That's beautiful defensive awareness from Marble Range. Plenty of space, Marble Rangers, they get it out of the fence, but uh, what well on to Tasman's uh, first uh, inside the 50, uh, and it all started with a massive uh, strong tackle, fair tackle uh, right in the middle there before. Possession first football, Zach Calderwood, hand passed over the top, kick forward from Archer Pertzel, going inside attacking 50, Marble, Ra Marble Range can't get there first. <laughs> Chow's never going to lose his feet, is he? Tackle, that's a sling tackle, surely umpire. Yes it is, and the free kick is paid against Max Black. And Tasman Imperial player not looking too healthy at the moment. I think that's Daniel Gobin. Yeah, Gobin's down. Just, yep. uh... So we're waiting for Gobin to uh, get up. I think Tasman he's Imperial, he's yeah, he's, he's got a bit of a problem there. So I dare say he's going to come off fit sooner rather than later. Tansel flew and couldn't bring it down. And a kick in from Kyle Castley. It's going to sit. Tasman's pick it up, beating one. Yeah! is gone. Marble Range, are they going to play on? Oh, smothered. The kick is smothered and that's done well. his own fault and the umpire orders a throw in around about 35 from home at the southern end. The tempo's gone up certainly from the uh, Tasman side at the moment. They're uh, starting to be more present around the, uh, the contest there and uh, starting to try and win that more of that 50-50 ball. Tasman's winning the tap down. Ball falls to the bottom of the pack and now Mini get the hand pass away. Castley off the left boot kicking into space. That's not going to sit. That's going to trickle, trickle, trickle and oh, doing well there is Keeley keeping it in and they're prepared to give up all territory just as long as they can keep a hold of the football. That's a nice little jinking move there and the short kick finds Max Black. They did very well. He sees Black the man inside, no worries. Onto the chest of Archer Purtzel. Purtzel now, he's in front but it's a long way to go. Purtzel, he's about 65 out, now moving in. He lets loose from 51. Purtzel, got plenty of it and it's out to the left hand side and I think it missed everything, did it? Or did it get through for one? No, it missed everything. So we're going to have a free kick going the way of Tasman Imperial as they bring it back in. We are now into time on at the end of this first term and Marble Range by 16. Purtzel doesn't mind uh, having a, a, a big swing outside the arc. He's had a couple of looks at it so far. Shriver went up, threw an arm at it, and I'm surprised that they're not giving a, a free kick of some description, although the mark was taken there by Stoll on that outer wing. Stoll now. Throws it on the right boot and it's a wonky old helicopter kick and it bounces. And did that come up? They're yeah, ready to go. Yes, it did. So the boundary umpire ordered to throw in on that far wing. Only about 20 metres short of the halfway mark. If that, boundary umpire now once, twice and three times the charm as it goes over the head. Stoll is underneath it. Got front spot and tap to advantage. Marble Range first one to mess with the crumb and I think it's a free kick to Tasman's and they're going to play on here. Can they get any clear possession? Izzo the hand pass back and now it's Harry Habick looking for an option onto the left boot. It's a terrible kick but it's going to sit nicely because Hutchinson can't control it. Hutchinson just a terrier at the ball. It was two on one Tasman's and I thought Hut Hutchinson got legged and he did. Well, he, he got tripped and he got hit high at the same time. Figure that one out. Hutchinson's going to play on quickly. Hand pass away to Josh Slade. Slade goes inside forward 50. One-on-one -on -one contest. Dead Wolford dishes it out. Left foot snap. Kyle Castley. Kyle Castley. Oh, it's a beauty from Kyle Castley. Straight down the centre. And Marble Range, they have their third goal of the afternoon. That is a definite contender for the EP Surf goal of the day. Make it your goal to look great with EP I, Surf. I think we'll be talking about that one at the end of the game. Uh, nice on the left there. Nice curling ball. We were right behind it. But uh, uh, Marble Range uh, getting one back because uh, Tasmans were starting to... Uh, uh, get some numbers around the contest. You know they'll, 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 they won a contest here in front of us on the wing. It was it was two on one. So if they can get more numbers around the ball, then they're a chance to uh, get some possession forward. Curtis of Sales and Service, Tommy Bay Cummins, and Woodner scoreboard. Marble Range three four twenty two. Tasman's yet to score, and it's just been all Marble Range all the time in this first term. Yeah, Marble Range have got all the answers, uh, and, and, and they're just so clean when they get into the uh, 
into the arc, um, and, and the, 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 they were just sort of working the ball around the arc, but then Tasman's trying to work it out, and then uh, nice ball there from, uh, from Castley on, on the left, good curling ball. Ball goes up, Stoll wins the tap down for Tasman's, and it spins around so Clements can't get clean possession, Tasman's back on it, and the umpire waits and waits, and the ball eventually comes away. Marble Range get the crumb, and they get the hand pass back into the contest. Doing well, ducking, weaving, dodging was Jackson Bennett. Jackson Bennett does well. But Tasman's are back there to pick it up, and they can't get clean. Oh, that's a very fortunate mark, doing well there. And now they're going to move away here, Tasman's. Sorry, Guardy, I'll get out of your way in a sec. Quarter time, if they can move quickly. Starting to find some space now, Tasman's uh, on the outer side as they uh, try to get the ball into their arc. And the kick, and that's a good mark sitting up there. They're about 65 from home here, Tasmans. They're probably going to have to bomb long. In fact, they decide to go short, and that misses everybody going in over the top. Marble Range doing well to get there first. Ridden into the ground, was he? Umpire says no. Umpire waits and waits and waits, still waiting. And now we're going to get a ball up pretty much right in front of the scoreboard here at Wongari Oval. That's, that's probably their best uh, attempt to get inside the attack so far, Tasmans. Uh, Harris is providing... Uh, an opportunity up forward, but uh, that went begging, so uh, Marble Ranger will look to work it out. That's right. Kick back in, Billy Byers takes it, and there is the siren in the background, and that is quarter time here at Wongari. And on the Curtis's Sales and Service scoreboard, it's Mar well, here it says 3 3 21. I've got it as 3 4 22, but what we do agree on is that Tasman Imperials are yet to score. Terry, your thoughts on the first term? Just uh, two. Too slick, Marble Range, and uh, look, they're, they're going to use this as a, a nice tune-up uh, to the, uh, the the post match, or the post season coming up in a few weeks' time. Um, so they'll they'll look to put to their uh, foot to the throat of uh, Tasman's uh, quite early. And they've they've been very dominant so far. Tasman's have been undisciplined at times, uh, and, and and they've struggled to get the ball um, out out of the middle. Really, um, they've had one a clear. Uh, attempt to get into the attack, but uh, apart from that, it's uh, it's all been marble range down their end. And we'll have all the action from the second term coming up next on our live and exclusive coverage of the 2023 Port Lincoln Football League Premiership season. Thanks to our number one ticket holder, Macca's Port Lincoln, the home of local footy on 5 double C. Slady stand out for the goal. Oh, that's what it's all about. That's what we're out here for. A bit of fun and a bit of money, right? This quarter, let's not go away from what we're doing. Let's Maintain the intensity. Mid's real good in there. Jed real good on Stolly as well. Let's take another step with our emphasis on Stolly too, can we? Watch him grab it out the rock. And Billy, mate, you know what he's going to do. He's going to duck every single time. So make sure you go low and make him earn every one he goes for. Other than that, let's run an attack. Let's go here. Let's go. Come on. Okay. Seemed like our mics were left on for a period there. Uh, through the quarter time break, it is quarter time, and the scoreboard has been updated here at Wongari Oval. It is Marble Range 3 4 22 leading Tasman Imperial. Yet to score on the Curtis Sales and Service Tummy Bay Cummins and Woodner scoreboard. We are waiting now for the players to take their position back out in the middle as umpires head back to the centre as well. Curtis's out of town scoreboard, I can tell you that it is the 25th minute of the third term at the Cattery and Geelong 6945 leading the Dockers 6642. That one a little bit of a squeaker there. Uh, not so tight in Ballarat, 22 minutes gone in the third term. It's the Bulldogs 81058 leading the Giants 4731. In the Sandville being played at Wigan Oval, it is Woodville West Torrens 6541 leading Sturt 4832. 24 gone in the second term. In the NRL being played at GIO Stadium, I've got no idea what I'm doing with my tipping because Newcastle lead the Canberra Raiders 20 points to nil. How do you figure that one out. I got absolutely no earthly clue. Uh, as the NRLW score, St George Illawarra leading Parramatta 8-4. to four. Umpire with the ball in the air and we are underway in the second term here at Wongri. Everybody seemed to miss the tap out. Billy Habit come down with it and he got taken high. So we're going to have the first free kick of the second term awarded to Tasman Imperial. Marble Range not keen on it. Good start there by uh, Tasman's as they uh, look to get into their attack. Um, Collins uh, taking the mark there. So, um, I mean, they've come into this uh, second term with donuts. I mean, the only donuts we want to see here at the game are the ones that are out there in the Royal Flying Doctors van. So, um, uh, Stoll, Coach Stoll would have had a little bit to say 
uh, to Tasman to just try and get themselves back in this game. Tyson Collins kicking from just outside 50, got right onto that one, and it's away to the right Not hand quite. side. Looking good though. Looks good from the air. Shows Marble Range 3 4 22 leading Tasman's one behind as we tick over to one minute gone on the Ace Merchandise and Apparel Time Clock in the second quarter. And the kick in missed everybody as it fell to Josh Slade at the back. Goes short to Guy Hutchinson. Umpire calling play on. They're going to hand pass this down this left wing onto the left boot. It's a bit of a slice kick, helicopter kick. Beat everybody over the top. Wolford tries to get there first. He's beaten to it by Tasman's. Hand pass in. And now it's away from Charlton kicking into the centre. They're just doing this so well. Marble range. It's a bit of an up and under from Jackson Bennett. He got under that one, but the mark is taken by Lachlan Strap. Jennings. And Jennings will line up just slightly off centre to the right, but still very, very kicking. Man who loves a shot at goal, man who loves the camera. Oh. The thing to do with the camera is get in close. Yep. Lachlan Jennings makes no mistake from pretty much bang in front, so he adds... Lachlan Jennings, big strap, he loves it. ...in this match, moving them along to 4-4-28, courtesy of sales and service scoreboard, Tasman's won. Yeah, Marble Range uh, certainly uh, getting uh, back to how they were in the first term, just uh, finding players, uh, and as I mentioned before, it's, uh, it's, it's starting to open up now from both sides, so uh, I think it, it may be a little bit more free-flowing uh, as we move on in the second term. Umpires bringing the ball back to the middle. Once again, we do it all this afternoon. Thanks to our number one ticket holder, Macca's Port Lincoln, the home of local footy. Umpire McDonald with the ball back in the middle, and he moves back into the centre. We'll call today a success, eh? We're underway once more. Stoll wins the tap down. Tasman's first there. Billy Havick he got absolutely poleaxed as he took that ball, and he's straight into the cricket pitch, not exactly where you want to get tackled, and the umpire will ball up once more. Stoll wins it again, tapping to advantage, but Marble Range are going to get there first. Oh, it was a wonky bounce, almost beating the man, and Hutchinson can't take the mark, so he lets it go over his head. Hutchinson on the left boot. It's going to sit down here for Max Black, and he couldn't get it, and now Billy Habick is taken to ground. A very strong tackle coming over the top from Josh Slade, and Habick... Uh, I was going to say he looked a little bit slow and probably just a little bit worn down from what he's done so far. Stoll brought the ball to the bottom of the pack and umpire very quick to call for yet another ball up as Harry Habick on the ball that time and Billy yet again slow to get up. Stoll wins the tap down, brought it down. That's a mongrel kick over the top. Only gets as far as Guy Hutchinson who puts a wobbler forward looking for Lachlan Jennings. Can't take the mark and now they fall back here, Tasman. And it's a wonky old kick going back to Stoll. Stoll again, brilliant mark. Can play this boy. Pressure from Jed Wolford, but Stoll holding the mark. Doing beautifully. Stoll looks up, calls his players forward, tells them to give him something. He goes long, kicking to a two-on-two -two contest. Pack flew. Nobody come down with it. Harry Izzo is first there, but now Marble Range with it, and they can't clear the crumb. Umpire to order a ball up. Ran him out 75 from home, southern end. There's plenty of space out here on the wing. We're starting to see... Uh... Uh, those one-on-one -on -one contests now, so uh, Tasmans would, uh, would, would favour themselves uh, as they go into their attack and Stoll uh, certainly uh, coming out breathing fire after that quarter time break. Tap out one by Marble Range with uh, Wolford there first instance. Hutchinson was tempted to kick in danger, did well to avoid it and the hand pass is going nowhere from Gobin because he can't actually get the hand pass away and the umpire will order yet another ball up. Uh, as we move further and further to the southern end of Wangari Oval here. And now Marble Range, they get it onto the left boot, trying to bring it out of their defensive end. And Stoll is there to send it straight back in. And that's a good mark taken. Very disappointing defensive effort there from Marble Range. Jackson Tansel onto the left boot, sending his forwards on the chase. Billy Bias is there doing beautifully. And now the quick hand pass, and they're going to transition very quickly here. Marble Range into an attacking format. Just letting the ball bounce there is Lockie Pake. He can't handle it, has to socket to advantage off the ground. Tasman's get back there. I thought that was high. And and we're going to see... No, we are going to see the free kick going the way of Tasman's for the high contact. I thought umpire McDonald was giving a free kick to Marble Range there for a minute, but he decided to put it the right way. Free kick certainly uh, favouring the home side at the moment, so Tasman's will be looking to uh, capitalise. Tansel's uh, got some good hands as they... Uh, go inside the 50 as they have another chance here now. And kick into the forward line and just straight down the throat. There was no one there from Marble Range. Very uncharacteristic defensive laps there and very surprising that they left the man all on his own up front. And I think that's Tyson Collins lining up from pretty much bang in front. 
Yeah, good mark there by uh, Collins. Uh, didn't have too many uh, opposition players with him and uh, was able to get free. And, and Tyson Collins slots it straight down the middle. So Tasman Imperial, they have their first goal of the afternoon on the Curtis Sales and Service scoreboard. Tyson Collins with the opener, and it's the first contender from Marble Range for the EP Surf goal of the day. Make it your goal to look great with EP Surf. 4-4-28 Marble Range leading Tasman Imperial 1-1-7. And we have had five minutes of play on the Ace Merchandise and Apparel Time Clock. Nothing like getting that first goal to settle the nerves because uh, they went through that whole first term Tasman Imperial uh, with, the, with the donut, so um, you know, just to get to get the first goal and uh, to get a bit of momentum up um, as the stay, get, as the game starts to uh, open up across the whole field, uh, they'll be feeling pretty good about themselves and uh, looking to build on that. And just waiting for the boundary umpires to bring the ball back into the centre. And I've got to say, it's great to see the boundary umpires out there. A couple of one in particular who brought the ball back from the uh, goal square is only about four foot tall. So uh, great to see the kids getting involved as umpire sends the ball back in the air once more. Tap down one there by Wolford. Everybody overran it. So Billy Habick first to the crumb and he gets it around the body. And it's just going to sit, sit. Harry Izzo gets there and he trips over his own feet and taken to ground in marble range. Going to pick up the crumb and Billy Bias now brings it away onto the right boot. He keeps it low. Was that pushing the back? Umpire said no. Marble range at first there. Billy Bias picking it up again. He was all over that. And now I think that's Clements getting the ball into the forward line. Beautiful kick. What can they do here, Marble? range. Are they going to go long for home or are they going to try and pass off? Oh, that was an opportunity and I think Clements wanted it in the middle. They decide to go short, kicking to the top of the contest. Is that a mark? Is that a mark? Yes, it's paid. They're going to play on here from Black. Going out to Daniel Minnie. He goes short, straight onto the chest. And in fact, no, that wasn't 15. So the umpire called play on. Marble Range Corp. How good is that for a top? Beautiful kick out to this wing. And now it's Seal. Seal. He's di in fact, it's Collins dispossessed, I should say. Back to Harry Habick. And now he gets the hand pass. Is that Gobin back on? I think that's Gobin. Yeah, it is. He's done well to come back. And he gets a left foot torpedo around the body. That's an interesting combination. Misses everybody. It's going to sit here for Tyler Frank. Franklin. Franklin can't keep his feet. It's at the bottom of the pack. Franklin, he's all over that. And now Marble Range pick it up. And now they're all over it. And the umpire will call for a ball up. Rare blunder there from Marble Range as they go into their attack. They, they, had, that on, they had that on toast. I mean, they could have uh, gone to black and uh, had a shot at goal, but uh, Tasman's were able to work it out and, and it's become a 50-50 ball. Uh, free kick paid to Marble Range in the meantime. Looked like Wolford being taken without it. Archer Purcell now deciding to play on. Goes over the head of Black, finds Glenn Schreiber. He keeps it low, going into forward. And on the half volley uh, was uh, Mini and away to Black. And the ball goes to the bottom of the pack. And the umpire calls for a ball up around about 35 to 40 from home at the northern end. Black's uh, certainly starting to see a little bit of it. We're seeing Plenty of him in the contest there as uh, Marble Range go forward again. Tensel trying to bring it out, gets the hand pass away, Gobin onto it, and now they'll try and just work this slowly out of their own end. Uh, Tasman Imperial, but it's spoilt and getting back to the ball first is Price Marshall. He took his time and they have plenty of it. They go into the centre, miss the target, but plenty of time for Josh Slade to pick that up. Slade dancing, weaving, getting the short one away for Clements. Quick hand pass away. They transition quickly here with Slade again and the pass and the kick is partially smothered. Mini going wide, 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 and the mark is taken there by Todd Owen, brother of Chad, who celebrated 300, and Todd Owen in game number 240 this afternoon, looking to slot a goal of his own. Not too common a goal kicker, Todd Owen, although he has grabbed a couple this year. Yeah, Owen uh, had plenty of space out there, just inside the 50, looking to uh, go short. And the ball goes to the ground, and Tasman Imperial looking to bat it to advantage. Was a man being held without it? Umpire says yes, and the free kick. In fact, they're going to play advantage here. So Tasman Imperial coming away with Stoll now, marking it right in front of us. And he just takes his time. Stoll, very, very slow. He's going to be called to play on here in a minute, surely. Stoll, and now he's told to play on. So the hand pass away, and they're going to play on. 
and the kick to a one-on-one -on -one contest was an ordinary one because Marble Range had front spot. Izzo affecting a good tackle. Umpire calling play on. Owen with the hand pass back. Second one finding Castley onto the left boot. It only gets as far as I was going to say stole, but he wasn't actually able to take the mark as Tom Pierce got in front of him and Max Black can't control the ball. It's Pierce and Black and now coming away is Archer Purtzel onto the right boot. Kicks to a one-on-one -on -one contest. Hands there and that's a good mark taken. Good solid effort there from Tom Charlton. Charlton looking up. What can he see? Charlton deciding to go short, short, and I'm looking right into some pretty heavy glare from a windscreen there. But Marble Range, they play on into the middle. Clements now, he decides to send his man on the chase. And Mark taken by Boyd West, who does all sorts of gymnastics on his neck as he falls into the ground. But Boyd West takes the mark, and he'll be kicking just off centre from about 35. They were able to find targets, Marble Range. Uh, pinpoint accuracy uh, as they got inside the 50. And it all started with Purcell keeping the ball alive right in front of our central commentary position. Quite right, as Boyd West now. He's got the ball just outside the arc, and now he's, he's going to go short, looking for another option, and finding it on the chest is Tom Charlton. Charlton now. Who's going to actually take a shot at goal? Let's see if someone does now with Tom Charlton. He's going to be kicking from about 35, although that windsock is starting to show a bit, so maybe... I can sort of understand now why they're passing it around. Here's Tom Charlton getting under it, spraying it out to the right-hand side. It's not even going to have the legs, and it's going to be a left foot snap from the pocket. It's off hands. Is that going to cross the goal line? It hits the behind post, so we're going to have a throw in from deep in the marble range left forward pocket. Castley uh, trying to get the ball through there, but uh, to Noel Val uh, going straight into the padding of the, uh, the behind post on the outer side. <laughs> Umpire sends the ball in. Stoll sort of had an air swing, tried to get a big punch out, couldn't do so. And bringing it up now is Marble Range, and I think that was Schreiber with a right foot snap. Not going to make the goal line again as the ball crosses the boundary line, and it should be a fr In fact, no, it was called off hands by the boundary umpire, so we're going to get yet another ball in, or a throw in, I should say, from that right forward pocket for Marble Range. That windsock has really blown to life in the last couple of minutes. Umpire throws the ball in. Tap down one by Tasmans. They get Crumb. Schreiber off the right boot. And that will that will go through for a behind. So Schreiber puts it through for a behind, moves Marble Range along to 4-5-29. Curtis to Sales and Service scoreboard, leading Tasman Imperial 1-1-7. Not attacking as uh, easy as they did in the uh, first term, Marble Range, but um, Certainly their second efforts uh, are to be commended because, uh, you know, if they're slightly off, um, they're able to have someone back them up as they uh, go into the attack, as we saw earlier on, as they get another look at it. Marble Range bring it straight back in 50 after they brought the ball down in a bit of a messy contest. Tasman Imperial coming away with it. Umpire says it's going to be a free to Tasman. I'm not quite sure why, but we're going to get the free taken. And I think that's Harry Habick at the back, it might be. They're going to come across their... Back line. Oh, that's dangerous. Oh, gee, that was a, a bit of a gamble. Toby Wright with it now. And Toby Wright decides to go longer to a one-on-one -on -one contest. Good use of the body. Can't keep his feet there. Going to ground his Price Marshall. Brent Harris all over him. Brent Harris putting a little bit extra on. And Harris and Marshall, they're not liking it. Tyson Collins getting in the middle of it. And the umpire says, give me the ball quickly. I want to get on with it. And Brent Harris does just that. It's Wolford and Seal once, uh, Stoll once more, sorry. And Stoll wins it. Billy Habe can pass away. Franklin got axed. Absolutely. But he's taken without it. And the umpire will give the free. Lachlan Jennings doesn't like the call. Tyler Franklin decides to go sideways. Almost missing it is Harry Habick. But he does take the mark. He decides to play on out to that left wing. Looking for Tansel. Finding him nicely. Almost taken by his own man. Tansel now. Looking up. Looking. Wanting to play on. Bias on the mark. Bias wants to play on. He gets contact on that. Billy Bias. That's a terrible kick. And now Marble Range will try and transition out of defence. Boyd West trying to let this ball sit and he does beautifully Boyd West picked up the ball had the opportunity to run it forward can they control it nice hand pass up marble range still with it wonky old left foot kick sits up in the breeze and Stoll does well to hang on to the ball gee the breeze caught that kick and Gobin can't go with it he lost it in the breeze and he's overrun it again here's Tyler Franklin with it Franklin looking looking hand pass did he get it yes he did he got fair contact and now it's back with Nathan Frost 
Frost bombing into contest. Everybody misses it. Here's Izzo on the left boot. Looking, looking. Tansel can't get there. Marble range back with it. Now it's Slade. Slade, long looping hand pass coming back. They're going to try and keep this one, are they? It's a wonky old kick. Tyson Collins can't get there. Doing very well to run that ball down first was Jackson Bennett. Bennett sending into the midfield. This wind is playing havoc with everybody. They're all overrunning it. Tyler Franklin now got onto it. Right foot kick inside forward 50. Tasman's wanted the free for a late shot. Umpire calls play on. Tansel hand pass over the top. Is it going to sit for Brent Harris? It does. Brent Harris strolls in, kicks the goal. They did well in the end there, Tasmans, to hold on to that one because that ball was doing all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Umpire calling play on. Brent Harris taking advantage. Marble range 4-5-29, leading Tasman Imperial 2-1-13, courtesy to Sales and Service scoreboard. I said at the start of the game there wasn't much breeze in it, but it is starting to pick up uh, going by the, what we're seeing at that windsock there. But uh, Tasman's really got to take advantage of uh, the breeze going in their favour and uh, you know they they were able to get uh, a couple of options there inside their 50 uh, Tansel and also Harris uh, they were just lining up to try and kick a goal and then um, you know their second effort through Harris uh, they'd be pretty happy with themselves certainly a very impressive breeze we're seeing the windsock really pick up at the moment so Marble Range, I think, have done well to limit the damage so far because they haven't really been able to get much of an entry in inside forward 50 Marble Range. They've kicked one goal and Tasmans have kicked two in this quarter. That'll be the old Coffin Bay Doctor. Oh, yeah, I like it. Umpire puts the ball in the air. Everybody went without it. Stoll went too quickly. Marble Range bringing it away. It's a mongrel left foot kick going forward. And good mark taken there by Kyle Castley. Castley onto the left boot. Driving it towards the forward 50. Is that going to sit? Yes, it is. Tom Charlton does well. Charlton looking for an option. Going forward. Bias. He can't take the mark. Arm was chopped. Umpire says free kick. So Billy Bias will get the free. You can hear some Tasman's fans in front of us. They don't like the call. And Billy Bias will line up. be interesting to see if he decides to pass this one off or if he'll go for goal himself. Billy Bias. He's lining up. Slight angle, only about 10 degrees. Now moves in from the 50 metre arc. He's about 40 metres out. Billy Bias almost kicking into the man on the mark. That drifts away to the right hand side and through just for the one point on the Curtis of Sales and Service scoreboard, which reads 4 6 30 marble range, leading Tasman Imperial 2 1 13. 17 minutes gone in this second term. The 1 2 attack for marble range of uh, Bias and Triber, uh, not getting the supply that they've been used to in uh, previous weeks where it's uh, you know been. There's been more opportunities for them. Um, Tasman's are, are certainly uh, taking advantage of the breeze that, that is evident so far, and uh, they've gone forward a few times. Tom Pierce with the kick in was an absolute belter, and Tasman's can't get clean possession. And Marble Range, no, the umpire said that it was already in the ruck and couldn't get clear. Marble Range disappointed by the call because they were off to the races. Umpire back with it, looking to call his way out, and Schreiber up against Stoll in the ruck. Schreiber got front spot. Billy Habick chasing down the crumb for Tasman's. Away to his brother Harry. Right foot round the corner kick. Izzo missed it in the breeze. Marble Range doing well to judge that one. Schreiber, hand pass back is a fairly long one. Now they're going to drive it into the centre, sending Max Black on the chase. He's up against Tyler Franklin. Black and Franklin. Black got there first, couldn't handle it. Black, was he taken with Without it. Umpire calls play on. Tasman's going to get there first. Franklin tried to soccer it off the ground. Couldn't do so. Black got it back. And now Tasman, uh, Marble Range, sorry, with Clements. Back for Black again. He's gone too far, has he? No umpire called play on. And Billy Bias takes the mark inside forward 50. I, I may have jinxed it there because I said, look, they haven't been getting the supply that they, they would have liked. But uh, Bias had that on a, on a gold platter there. And uh, Marble Range uh, are going to have a, a closer shot at goal through uh, Slade. Josh Slade now has an opportunity to add to the tally. His brother Todd opened the scoring. And now Josh, he's on a nasty angle, but he's not kicking from nearly as far out. And if he aims out to the left, that breeze should start swinging it back. And here is Slade. Slade starts at left. He didn't start it far enough left. And has that taken anything it's gone through for one behind on the Curtis of sales and service scoreboard moving marvel range along to 4 7 31 leading tasman imperial 2 1 13 as we approach the 19 minute mark of the second term on the ace merchandise and apparel time clock good 50 50 uh, co uh contest at the moment in terms of the attacking we're seeing the ball down both ends so <laughs> as far as a spectator point of view i think it's uh, a bit more appetizing and the kick in, and Schreiber couldn't take the mark. Harry Havick got the crumb up for Tansel. 
Tansell taps to his own advantage and the kick goes wider out. Is Izzo going to be able to chase this one down? He is. Izzo gets to it. Got the kick forward and Harris was beaten in the contest beautifully. Marvel Range just using their strength at the back, allowing the ball to come to them. And I think they figured out this breeze defensively. Be interesting to see if they can carry that over into the final term if the breeze does hang around. Marvel Range, they're in no hurry to send the ball upfield. Tasmans want to play on, and now they're called to play on, and they just decide to play a little bit of keep away here. They're in no hurry to move the ball forward as we enter time on at the end of this second quarter. And now the ball, that's a wonky old kick, but they hold on to it, Marble Range. They're just playing defensively inside their own defensive 50, and that ball will sit as the hand pass over the top. That was ballsy from Bennett, and he finds Cooper Miller. Cooper Miller goes short, and the mark is taken there by Archer Purzel. Geez, they're playing a dangerous game at the moment, Marble Range. I think Purzel will just want to belt this thing as far as he can. No, he decides to go short once again. Is that 15? Umpire says yes, and Jackson Bennett taking the mark. Right in front of the canteen here at Wongaree Oval. Jackson Bennett called now to play on. Bennett throws it on the left boot, goes back into the centre. There's no one there for Tasman Imperial, but the ball fell over the top. Marble range back with it. Hand pass away, and the umpire, no, that wasn't a hand pass. It was a throw, says the umpire. Daniel Gobin playing on quickly, finding Jackson Tansel. Tansel onto the left boot, looking to go inside forward 50. Good spoil there from Todd Owen. He's taken without it, Todd Owen, and he's going to get the free kick. Unfortunate there for Tasman's. Slade for uh, the Rangers, uh, he had an uphill battle to try and uh, work that ball out because he had two uh, Tasman players just coming right at him. Uh, R Range had plenty of space down back, but then uh, when Pertzel got the ball, they, they, they found themselves in a bit of trouble when they were working the boundary pretty tight and uh, Tasman's uh, managed to man up. And I think that tackle on Todd Owen was the first involvement we've seen from Seth Nassif in this game. He's been very quiet up front. Tasman's just haven't been able to get any ball up front so far. And when they get anywhere near it, they generally go from outside the 50, so they don't actually land it inside that attacking zone as their boundary umpire goes the throw in. Stoll went to bring it down, missed everyone. Socket off the ground by Marble Range. Socket was smothered. And now it's going to fall for, I think that's Clements. And Boyd West with the hand pass now, getting it out. And Schreiber goes wider again. And he finds Jackson Bennett. It's almost a holy trinity at the moment for Marble Range, but doing well there was right kicking back into attacking zone and now Tasman's they're going to try and get it and Marble Range just pick it off again they're so good on the ball at the moment Marble Range right foot clearing kick down that wing but Taz, in fact it was touched off the boot so it's called play on and Marble Range can they get the ball clean no they can't hold on to it and the ball falls to the bottom of the pack and we're waiting now the umpire says prior opportunity for Marble Range so Tasman's get the free I thought that was a little bit stiff Stoll's been dominant uh, for Tasman's uh, this period. He certainly has. And now we see Tasman Imperial deciding to go long inside forward 50. Marble Range just flooding to get there, trying to get as many bodies in front as they possibly can. And now they decide to clear out to that right-hand side again. Marble Range, what can they... Oh, nice little jink. And, the, and one bounce, taking two bounces. They got all the time in the world here, Marble Range, to settle, but they don't because that is the half-time siren you can hear in the background. Not much time on, simply because there weren't too many goals kicked in that quarter. And at half-time, it is Marble Range, 4-7-31. Curtis the Sales and Service scoreboard leading Tasman Imperial 2-1-13. Welcome back to Wongari Oval. Players and umpires are now back out in the middle. And I'm surprised that the kids haven't been uh, asked to uh, move as yet because the umpires are certainly ready and the players are certainly warming up. So we'll just wait for the umpires. I think the umpires are saying one more minute uh, before we get rid of the kids. No, the siren's gone there. So the umpires are giving the kids the, uh, the wriggle on orders now. Terry, how do you see this next quarter going? What do Tasman Imperials have to do to really get into the contest, given they're running into the wind, as they did in the first term where they were kept scoreless? 
Well, they've just got to shut down uh, Marble Range and um, you know stop them from being too dominant uh, on the scoreboard because we know that with Marble Range in, uh, in, in previous uh, rounds, their third terms are really dominant where it's been tied up until half time, but then they've managed to find another gear and just really set up a, a victory in that third term. I mean, uh, was it last week to, uh, against Waybacks? They only restricted them to one behind. So I'm expecting uh, Marble Range to really take advantage of this breeze that's going to their end this term. All right, so this is where Tasman Imperials really have to be on the ball. They really have to turn up for this quarter because if they don't, there's every opportunity that Marble Range could definitely kick out and really go on with it. Looking at Brad Masters in front of us, he's looking a little bit iffy. It's 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 sort of moment. favouring the left hip yeah. earlier on. So I don't know whether Brad Masters is going to be back. Uh, we'll keep an eye on him, but I would assume that he's going to be uh, starting off the bench. And in fact, the Tasman Imperials players have gone into their huddle. So we are now waiting for the Marble Range players to break from their huddle as well. Umpires now calling players uh, to the centre of the field. And we look as though we are pretty much ready as the umpires yet again give the kids a wriggle on order. Come on, kids and parents. Yeah, they are a little slow. This is the... The challenge, I suppose, with country footy, uh, asking the kids to vacate because, well, you do let them on to begin with and if you don't give them uh, the quick wriggle on order and there's still a few just standing there, then there could be a challenge uh, trying to get them off the field. A good turnout here today uh, at Wongri. We've had the netball uh, and, now, and now we've got the, uh, the, the footy. In fact, the uh, A1s are still underway. Still going, yeah. yeah, A1s are still underway. Yep. So uh, they're enjoying themselves over there. At the moment, the reality is you've still got to do something with netball. And it was good to see that there was a netball gate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gate. Yep. You know, regardless of whatever, who yeah. might have come in where. And yeah, yeah. It's a bit like hockey and football, you know. But the other um, funny thing, yeah. we're the only courts, we're the only location that have got you know, showers and change rooms. Oh, yeah. Oh, showers and change rooms. Yeah, so when the, the girls went to finish playing the netball and they want to go to cheap races, they can all have a shower and get changed and they're here. Yes. So, oh no, it's, it's it, bloody... it, The weather, it's just been so, yeah. so good. Yeah. yeah. It is, yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna... So where did they, oh, these come from Cummins, did they? Yeah. The, the, the Cummins, thing. Junior's own that one and we own the other one at the other end. Yeah, but um, the two, yeah. The two yeah. there were the come from Cummins, yeah. Yep. yep. Oh, that's so good. No. Yeah. And it's interesting about the surfers too. Oh, no, I'm oh, not talking. I'm not talking though. one person. No. I'm talking everyone has said this is better than playing at, at uh, Port Lincoln. You're right. Yeah. The surface is better. Yeah. yeah. See someone chipping us in front. Don't worry. Woodville West Torrens are leading Sturt by two points. That's all right. As uh, Tasman's bring the ball down, and now I uh, thought we were going to see a free kick paid, but no. And Marble Range managing to control the crumb at the bottom of the pack. Josh Slade kicking forward, and the ball will bounce away, bounce away. Nathan Frost is going to get there first, or is he? No, it's not going to be Frost. It's going to be Matthew Prout getting there first, and the free kick will go the way of Tasman Imperial. And just updating on that Sandful score, it is still a two-point break to Woodville West Torrens as we hit the one-minute mark. Free kicks uh, certainly in favour of Marble Range uh, in the early passages of uh, the game, but uh, Tasman's starting to get a few uh, critical ones now. That's exactly right, as now Marble Range trying to clean up some of the ball on the ground that they didn't get first time, and the umpire will call for a ball up on that outer wing. It's 18 points, Marble Range leading Tasman Imperials. Ace Merchandise and Apparel Time Clock shows one minute gone as we go for a second ball up, and umpire McDonald sends it in the air. Tasman's bringing it down. I thought there was a Marble Range player taken before acceptances. Umpire calls play on. Ball spurts out of the pack and then it is belted forward. Who's going to get there first? It's Marble Range. Hand pass back. Billy Bias moving into position to take a beautiful mark. Billy Bias knew where that one was going. Accepted the ball straight on the chest and he's going to be lining up just off centre from about 35. Yeah, he ran hard. Billy Bias uh, got himself into a really good position and, uh, and starting to get some good, good delivery and um, do what he does best and that's kick goals. And of course, the usual ritual, the socks right around the ankles for every player. So... Billy Bias decides to pull them up, or maybe of a quarter of an inch. Billy Bias moving in 
on the right boot, swinging, swinging, and he likes it. So Billy Bias taking no time to get Marble Rangers fifth goal of the afternoon and first of the third term on the Curtis's Sales and Service scoreboard, moving Marble Range along now to five goals, seven thirty-seven, leading Tasman Imperial to one thirteen. Certainly, uh, getting back to how, how, how dominant they were in that first period, Marble Range, and, uh, and really capitalising on this breeze and uh, you know, allowing their, their key players to get space and, uh, and a good uh, delivery there to Billy Bias and, uh, and getting himself into a really good spot. He has a knack of being able to find space, Billy Bias, and he had no problems finding it there. Wolford up against Stoll in the ruck as umpire will put the ball in the air once more. I can see Jordan Clements in there waiting off to the side. And up it goes, it's Stoll and Wolford. Stoll wins the tap down. Clements got there first, couldn't control it. Tasman's onto it with Tyler Franklin. He had an age to get rid of that and the umpire says, yes, you're gone. So the free kick will go the way of Clements being held onto and I think he's gonna, no, he's not gonna get 25. I thought he was going to. Clements goes short, finding Wolford. He's going to play on quickly here. Jed Wolford onto the left boot, sending it forward to a one-on-one -on -one contest. Tasman Imperial can't control it. Jennings brings it down. He goes without it. Tasman Imperial back with it. Hand pass. Misses Harry Havick. He's going to get onto it, and he just kicks low, trying to find the ball anywhere. Jordan Clements picks it up. He goes straight back on the attack. Billy Bias saw it was going over his head, so he ran after it and did well to try and chase the ball down. But Tasman Imperial going to let it sit. It up and they do that's a good mark there for Tom Pierce Pierce now looking up not seeing an awful lot that he likes he might come out to this left side now he decides to go back to the right wing kicking to a one-on-one -on -one contest oh Brent Harris flew he went without it though and Marble Range picking it up and are they going to be able to control it no Tasman's got hand to it oh Harry Habick copped one right across the back of the head and he's going to be taking the free kick round about center field he decides to go short finds Billy and Billy Habick now will take an opportunity to settle things down. They're certainly handling the conditions better, uh, Tasman Imperials, uh, compared to the first term where they were just dominated by Marble Ranger because we're still seeing that breeze go to the right-hand side of the dial, but uh, they're going to the left. Uh, Tasman's going against the grey, but uh, certainly an improvement on the first term. Lachlan Jennings gets it, tries to put a torpedo in. It's not a bad effort, certainly gets plenty of it. And unfortunately, the bounce eludes Tynan Keeley and Tasman's will bring it away here with Nathan Frost. Goes low, finds Tyson Collins. Collins now, what's he going to do? Collins, he just settles it down a little bit. Decides to take his time and now he'll continue down that right side, kicking one-on-one -on -one contest. Well, Harris had a much better idea. He indeed keeps it in. No, he doesn't. Oh, I thought Harris did beautifully there. Well, he did well to judge the win, but he just couldn't keep the ball in. Yeah, good, uh, good outcome there for uh, Tasman's a nice 50-50 ball. And uh, gee, they, they've just got it outside their arc, so uh, they're a silly chance to go forward here, Tasman's. Stoll bringing it down, had an opportunity to get rid of it, says the umpire. The Tasman's fans in front of us don't agree with the call. Under the old rules, it was an automatic free, but now Marble Range will get the free for not correctly disposing of the football. Stoll still doesn't like the call, but Marble Range are going to play it out from their own end, finding Billy Bias on that left flank. Bias, and he dances around the man on the mark. He then puts it onto the right boot, letting rip, going to a one-on-one -on -one contest. Good effort there from Marble Range, spoiling from behind. It was Tom Charlton kicking ahead, but Tasman's are back there to pick it up. Doing well at the back is Matthew Prout. Prout. Just slows it down, throws it on the right boot, goes back out to that right wing. Oh, Stoll flew! Couldn't bring it down. That would have been your City Motors mark of the day for sure. Marble Range playing on, getting it in there. Jennings can't handle it. And Tasman, now that's high contact and they'll get the free. Jennings didn't come down with it and then decided to go what looked like a pony ride there, I thought. Using the, uh, we'll say the main is probably the best way to describe it of Nathan Frost, given he was holding on. And that's a good mark. Jumping for it and getting in front was Josh Slade. And the ball goes to ground now. And Jake Stoll picks it up for Tasman Imperial. Mungrel kick forward. There's a couple of guys on the ground. We'll keep an eye on that contest in back play. Great spoil going in. And I think that was, maybe it was Slade again. Was that Davis? No. I'm not 100% like certain. It looks like he's wearing 28 though. It certainly does. And Marble Range getting the free. And they're going to come back to Todd Slade. Slade will go across. I thought he was going to look for Todd Owen, but he decides to keep it more centred. And now they are going to come across their back line. And they decide to line up, getting out of defensive end. And Boyd West can't control it. Oh, lays a great tackle. Was that a sling, though? 
Uh, taken without it, says the umpire, but we're going to play on. Brent Harris goes without it, couldn't control the bounce, and he got taken high, Brent Harris. Rather fortuitous. A little bit fortunate to get the free because he did make an absolute meal of it. Hand pass away to Harry Habick. Habick gets it into the forward line and that goes nowhere. And Brock Davis, it looks like back there. I'm sure that's a 28. You're quite right. I'm pretty sure that is 28. Harris but... was uh, completely surrounded by Marble Range players and uh, was no chance to go into the attack. And uh, good rebound here from uh, the Rangers. Todd Slade finding Jed Wolford. Wolford decides to try and go around Billy Habick. Couldn't do so, so got the hand pass away to Jackson Bennett. Now bias. They're just hand passing their way through the middle here. They're going to play on here, Marble Range. Jinking around the man who was going to put on the smother and straight onto the chest. You could not land that any better on Tyne and Keeley's chest if you tried. Yeah, he had too much space there, uh, Keeley. Um, and, and good hard running there from Billy Bias through the centre. Really, 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 he's, he's really found another gear this term. Tyne and Keeley did not move for that ball to find him on the chest. And Tyne and Keeley lining up, only a slight angle, certainly not something that should be any problem. And he moves in, starts at left, fades it back right. And Tyne and Keeley, in his first game back after a long, long injury layoff, he adds the sixth goal for Marble Range on the Curtis Sales and Service scoreboard. And it is starting to get away from Tasman's in this third term now. You did say it's the championship quarter, and Marble Range making it count 6 7 43. Curtis of Sales and Service scoreboard leading Tasman Imperial 2 1 13. I feel like the breeze has dropped off just a little bit. Well, the windsock isn't as up as it was. It's probably a 45 degree angle rather than out at 90 degrees at the moment. So, yeah, you're right. Marble Range aren't running with as much of a breeze. And as I say, that, what does it do? Goes back up to 90. Well done, me. Oh, I can dead set stop a train. Umpire yeah. McDonald back with it. Right hand side of uh, their attack, Keeley was allowed too much space, uh, managed to get it right out on the chest and uh, put through a, a, a critical goal there just to give him some breathing space. Stoll winning the tap down, Marble Range picking up, going to advantage. It was Brent Har no, it was, in fact it was Nassif. And that's a good mark taken up front. That's Harris with the ball right now. Seth Nassif moving into the midfield, trying to get his hands on the ball. And that's only the second time I think I've called Seth Nassif today. And he comes up with a result because Brent Harris can kick from bang in front. He did take a strong tackle in the first term, but it hasn't really done much today. Nassif. Brent Harris on the left boot. And he hangs that out to the... And it doesn't make the distance. In fact, it doesn't get to the goal line. And Marble Range are going to bring it away with Todd Slade coming away from his own end. Kicks out to that left wing. That's a huge kick. Using the win to advantage. Who is holding on to who is the question. Umpire says it was Marble Range holding on to Tasman's. So it's going to be Tasman Imperial getting the free. And taking the free. Uh, they're playing on past Billy, uh, past Billy Bias nicely. Drifting it into the forward line. Everyone flies and falls to the back where Marble Range have got players waiting for it, including Jed Wolford, goes out to that left wing, and who else but Billy Bias. And Bias looks up. He's just taking the game by the scruff of the neck at the moment, really, isn't he, Billy? He just finds space so often, it's just incredible. Goes back to Slade, and they continue along the back line with Brock Davis, deciding to touch the ball on the ground once, still further along the line. Doesn't go to hands with Price Marshall. Price Marshall's in trouble here. Did he get taken high? No, it's called play on. Marble Range still with it, and now they calmly bring it away. But the kick goes too far. Didn't judge the win there. Jake Stoll with it now. Stoll looking to line up inside forward. Oh, I can't take the mark. And I think that's Cody Spry. Went without it. On the bottom of the pack now, Marble Range. They're trying to come away with it. Hand pass now. Jed Wolford, can he control it? No, he can't. Ta oh, getting in there hard, Marble Range. And now they're going to win the football. Trying to get away. Hand pass sits up, and it's incorrect disposal. Umpire called play on. They're going to send man on the chase here in Todd Owen. Todd Owen now getting a bit of a mongrel kick forward and well, Toby Wright didn't know where it went. Tyne and Keeley coming back from his forward position. Keeley now, does he get it away? Umpire calls play on, shoots out the back of the pack. Here's Toby Wright. Right, hand pass away and it's a short kick, dinking kick and finally the mark is taken by Tom Pearce on this left wing. Almost right in front of our commentary position here at Wongaree. Tyson Collins gave the lead, Pearce says no, decides to go longer off the right boot, kicking to a 2 one contest. Good mark, good strong mark from Todd Slade. Just jumping straight through the pack, they come across field now, Lachlan Jennings, right boot. Sending it forward. Who's going to get there first? They're going to send Tom Charlton on the chase. Oh, Charlton's gone. Charlton's done something. I hope it's a cramp, but it's certainly in his right leg. And now Tasman Imperial going to bring it away. Tom Charlton trying to stretch that out. Harry Habick 
couldn't take the mark. Yeah, it might have just been a cramp. And Harry Havick couldn't take the mark. It's off hands. Boundary umpire to throw in. Marble Rage are really good at uh, creating opportunities uh, out of uh, something that probably doesn't look possible. So, you know, really tight spaces, they're able to get the ball out. And then, uh, George Clements. Makes it a little easier for themselves and create those uh, more on the top opportunities later on down the track. Marble Range player went without an umpire called play on. Thought that was a bit unfortunate for the home side but that's a good mark taken on the right halfback flank Tasmans they've done well there to shut down the marble range attack and it looks as though Max Black is going back onto the field in place of Tom Charlton who is looking for a little bit of attention Tasman Imperials go short and they continue along that right wing they're down by 30 points I think they like their chances of just being able to get the ball to hold up out there. Kicking to a contest. Stoll, can he hang on to it? Uh, it is paid. Well done, Jake Stoll. Yes, good solid mark. Contender for the City Motors mark of the day. They continue down and very, very good effort. Is that Harris out there? I'm not 100% certain, but uh, continuing on. In fact, Harris is up front, but it doesn't get to him because it falls short. Square, square's going out for the switch. Across their full back line here, Marble Range. Taking one bounce, surely the kick is coming, and it is. And Todd Owen will go on the chase. It's going to sit for him, the bounce, and he's going to look. And he's just going to chip it forward. Is that going to fall nicely? Oh, nice kick. And eventually finding Clements. Clements got under it a little bit. And it's a good mark in front. Doing well there is Matthew Prout. Prout going short and onto the chest there of Tom Pierce. Pierce now. With the netball in the background, I can still see that match going on in the A1s. And Tom Pierce, he decides to go play on, trying to get around the mark. What was well that? Well done, boy! Yes, I have no clue. Schreiber picked it off. He goes long inside for. Oh, bias flew. Thought he copped one across the face. In fact, it wasn't. It was on the shoulder. He, he just shied away from it, though, Billy Bias which made it look worse than what it was. Umpire calls for a ball up. Stoll wins the tap down. And now it will be brought away by Pierce. It's smothered there by Schreiber. Tasman yeah! Oh, and that's a problem. Yes, it is. Free yeah. kick. Yeah. And guess who's going to take the free kick? Yeah, man, Billy Byers. He's having a, a hot period in this uh, third quarter, and he, he's been in all of the uh, critical bit, bits of play. Just earlier on... Um, Jordan Clements was able to get free uh, and he was uh, supported through the agency of uh, Max Black. It was just a, a nice one-two combination there for Marble Range and uh, they have another shot at goal. Billy Bias goes for home and he just drags it across the face. He was probably expecting a little bit more wind to catch it than what it did. Not a bad punt from there. Left-hand side goes through for one point. So Marble Range on the Curtis of Sales and Service scoreboard move along to 6-8-44, leading Tasman Imperial to 1-13. It has been a pretty dominant display from Marble Range in this third term. Not as dominant as I thought we would have seen as the kick-in is not a good one. And that looks like Glenn Schreiber out there taking the mark and he'll be lining up. Well, will he be lining up? He might like his chances with the breeze behind him. If he was running the other direction, then uh, in fact, he decides to go short and it's onto the chest of Lachlan Jennings. And I think Tasman Imperial, that they just eased up there on that marking, allowing Jennings to get free. And I'm going to see Lachlan Jennings moving in, hits it from 45, Lachlan Jennings. Does it stay straight? It stays very straight. So Lachlan Jennings adds his second of the day to the scoreboard, and that is goal number seven for Marble Range. Moves them along now to seven, goal eight, 50. An even half century for Marble Range. Tasman Imperial, 2 one Curtis of Sales and Service scoreboard. They get evidence of Marble Range just, uh, you know, working in pairs and just uh, trying to tag team these uh, Tasman players. And, and every time Tasman throw something up, Marble Range have, uh, have the answers. Uh, we saw it there, evident uh, as they're going into their forward 50 uh, marble range, uh, of course, uh, Keely getting the mark. But then, you know, rather than trying to bomb it long, uh, going the shorter option and uh, finding Jennings and, uh, and getting the better result. We do it all this afternoon, thanks to our number one ticket holder, Macca's Port Lincoln, the home of local footy umpire 
calling his pathway out. There's absolutely no one behind him, so he's got no problem at all there. Will be Wolford and Stoll once again in the ruck. Stoll wins the tap down for Tasman's again. Billy Havick trying to run onto it. The bounce eluded him. Billy Havick still pursuing the ball as Marble Range get there first. And the umpire calls incorrect disposal. So Billy Havick will end up taking the free kick. So he earns the free kick in the end. It kicks into the man on the mark partially. And so it's slightly touched. Marble Range will get the deflection and they'll come away with it. They want to get the kick in quick here. And that's going to miss everybody over the top. And they did well to spot that. And running onto it is Max Black. He's spotted it perfectly. Looking to get it forward to Bias. It falls for Keeley. Keeley can't get the bounce. Bias picks up the crumb. Bias. Swing onto his left foot now. Well done, Billy! Over the top. Looking for Tynan Keeley. Keeley. He wanted to kick left. Now he kicks right. He keeps it low. And Marble Range still with it. It's Black. Black, can he get it free? He can, but he kicks straight into Tasman Imperial. That went all of about two metres. So straight away they have to hack it clear. Tasman's and Tyne and Keeley caught with it. They're taking him to ground and umpire says no prior opportunity. Tyne and Keeley didn't know what to do there. So the umpire says that's all right, we'll ball it up. I talk about Marble Range tag teaming Tasman's. It looks like Tasman's are returning the, flavor, the favor there. Uh, Keeley had no chance of getting out of that tackle from two uh, red players. No, he did no. Oh, oh. 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 Seven goal nine fifty one leading Tasman Imperial two one thirteen. Curtis's sales and service scoreboard as Tasman's bring it back in. It's a wonky old cat. Oh, good mark taken. It was close there, but Tom Pierce got there and. In a team that is really struggling at the moment, Tom Pierce has been pretty solid. Although, as I say that, he kicks out straight to Glenn Schreiber. It's sat up in the breeze. Jackson Tansell did his best to try and get back. Couldn't get anywhere near it. Schreiber, centering kick, finding Josh Slade. Slade now. Is he going to go for home or is he going to hand off? He decides to go for home. And does that go through for one point? Or did it miss the lot? Waiting, waiting. I think it's missed the lot. Yes, it has. It's away to the right-hand side. So Tasman Imperial will take the free kick. They probably need uh, every possession they can get just to try and work it out of their back half. I've got to say... Uh, oh, no. Keeley's moving really well in a, a couple of passages of play there, twisting and turning, just giving that knee a, a bit of a nudge every now and again. You're quite right. And as you say, Tasman Imperial need every possession they can get. So what do they do from the kick in? They put it straight onto Jordan Clement's chest. Clements now kicking for goal. It goes across the face and off hands through for yet another minor score. So now Marble Range move along to seven goal, 10 at 52, leading Tasman Imperial 2 1 13. Curtis's sales and service scoreboard. Prout brings it away. That ball sits up in the breeze and everybody missed it. Harry Habick chasing it down. Hand pass back in. They're in trouble here, Tasmans. They've got to try and find a way to get it clear. Marble Range are all over it and taken to ground now, no prior opportunity, and we will see a ball up. Wowee, that every opportunity they get Tasman Imperial, they just find a way to make a cheap turnover. It's almost like how they were playing in the first term, where any time they had possession, they managed to uh, turn it over and... Uh... Oh. Yeah! Yeah! Woo! The guy felt it Tap in the back of his head, that was high, wasn't it? Yeah. He's like, you know, that was his yeah, yeah. knee. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And Tyne and Keeley got above the pack and took it comfortably. So he's lining up for goal number two from pretty much bang in front. 25 out. Tyne and Keeley goes, thank you very much. He's got... He's back. ...of the afternoon on the Curtis Sales and Service scoreboard, moving uh, Marble Range along to eight goal, 10-58 leading Tasman Imperial 2-1-13. beer? Yeah, I'll buy one. Oh, you can go and buy one. I'll go and buy one. Yeah, right. yeah. You're right, he, he does He's look as though, well. he, for someone who's been off for so long, that, that movement is actually pretty impressive. Well, he was twisting and turning uh, on, on, in, deep in the four pocket, uh, right in the, on the right-hand side there. Uh, Marble Range used the corridor really well there, and um, he was able to get in front and take a really uh, strong, strong mark and, and get the goal. So. Um, it's been a good welcome game back for him. Absolutely it has. Umpire waiting for the ball to return. Don't forget we've also got the Lincoln Surf MVP award to give away. Support your local surf shop and look good doing it with Lincoln Surf. Plenty of players in line for that one. We'll see exactly where Terry decides to send the voucher. Umpire back with it in the middle 
and it is going to be Stoll and Wolford once more. And once again, Stoll wins it. Tasman Imperial first to the crumb on the ground. And that ball is going absolutely nowhere. And the umpire says that'll be enough of that. And we'll have a ball up pretty much from the same blade of grass. Umpire puts it in the air once more. Tap out one there by Marble Range, although Tasman straight onto it. And the umpire says it was high contact. So Tansel will get the free. And he hand passes away for Nathan Frost. Frost goes wider. Mark is taken. That looks like Harry out there. Harry Havick, maybe. Uh, in fact, it's Daniel Gobin sends it wider and Tyson Collins runs it down just in time to take the mark. And just in front of the impact shed sign here at Wongari Oval. Here is Daniel Gobin sending it longer. Just sits up in the breeze, flying in the contest. That's a good solid mark. I think that's Zach Calderwood out there. First time I think we've seen Zach Calderwood uh, in action today. Uh, been fairly quiet. Hand pass over the top. They're in a little bit of trouble here, Marble Range. And finally, they get the hand pass into space. Daniel Mini with the hand pass away to Max Black. All of a sudden, they're just breaking through the centre. Marble Range kicking into space. Guess who's going to run it down? He's got it now. What can he do? He swings onto the right, swings back left, decides to dance around Matthew Prout, deciding to go short. Doesn't quite find the man in Clements. Clements, hand pass away for Keeley. Keeley looks to hand pass again, and Tasman's bring it away. In fact, they hand pass to themselves and the ball goes over the boundary line and the boundary umpire in fact no it's going to be a free kick going the way of Matthew Prout. Prout was no match there for Bias he just ran rings around him uh, Billy as he uh, tried to get into the attacking 50 for Marble Range. And the free kick goes straight down the throat of Glenn Schreiber for Marble Range who decides to dance around the man on the mark. Schreiber kicking long towards the goal oh, yeah. Range. And Tom Charlton will be lining up on one of the most vicious angles you'll ever see. He's going to have to use the wind here. He, might go the he certainly will go the banana kick. Nothing like getting into the banana versus check side argument. In fact, he just he decides to just go the drop punt. That works. No problem at all for Tom Charlton. I thought it was a much worse angle than what it was, but he's got his first goal of the afternoon, does Tom Charlton. Nine goals for Marble Range, moving them along to 9-10-64, leading Tasman Imperial 2-1-13, courtesy of Sales and Service scoreboard. That margin now out beyond 50 points. Good Chill out, Amber. Are we done? Yep. Are we going to be able to feed everyone? Whoop. Third quarter score, 33 nil in favour of Marble Range over Tasman. So 5-3 to no score. Talked about the championship quarter. Marble Range have certainly made this one count as the ruck contest. And, well, I think Schreiber was a little bit surprised. And he went without it. And that is three-quarter time here at Wongari Oval. Marble Range doing it comfortably over Tasman Imperial. We make the score... Nine goal, 10, 64 to 2 1 13. What were your thoughts on that third term, Terry? As predicted, Marble Range have just come out and been really dominant in the third term. Uh, through no small part, I think Billy Bias has uh, been the difference there. He's been critical in the, in the, in the midfield there and, and, and getting up and creating opportunities uh, for Marble Range. Uh, also, like Max Black's, uh, Max Black's third term as well. But a good uh, return to football from uh, Tyne and Keeley. Moved really well in the uh, forward half there for Marble Range and was able to take that strong mark and kick a goal. Certainly was. Final quarter coming up next on our live and exclusive coverage of the 2023 Port Lincoln Football League Premiership season. Thanks to our number one ticket holder, Macca's Port Lincoln, the home of local footy. You're on 5 double C. Thank you. Still that three-way wing rotation between Archer, Billy and Todd. Good work. Good coach. This quarter, they're going to have to play caution to the wind a little bit, all right? So expect them to play this side more often than not. And expect, with pressure, when it gets way back, more turnovers will come. And there's an ability for us to capitalise on the counter. All right? The only time they were a threat to us was on the counter, a couple of mistakes that yeah. went through the middle and dribbled back and got a uh, goal side of us. Let's make sure as a back group and a mid group, we don't let that ball go back on the other side of us, all right? And if not, we just play the dead side. We'll have to push your pocket until we renumber and then we can start attacking again. This is still our predominant side we're going to play, all right? All right, other than that, work right. Tessie's going to go up another notch, all right? Let's get them away. Come on, come on. Let's go. 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 Let
The mic up. <laughs> uh, 14, 15 minutes gone in the final quarter. Woodville West Torrens 9 6 60, Sturt 7 13 55. So Woodville West Torrens still leading by five points over the Double Blues. Full time in the NRL at GIO Stadium. Newcastle 28 defeating the Canberra Raiders 6. And we've had 17 and a half minutes gone in the second term of the Sandville oh, Show. This is a strong win in the conditions. Yeah. Like, oh, like, Hollywood, if we, there's no wind, oh, both teams were pumped today. Yeah. Yep. The wind impact is damn style. That's what it's Yep. But still, a win's a win. Fuck, look at the crowd, man. It's not good, is it? It's fucking brilliant. And it looks as though the umpires are all pretty happy with that, so we're just waiting. Am I right in saying, was there an indiscretion earlier in the game because of the 666 rule? I think that's what the free kick was directly off the, uh, off the restart, was the 666 rule. Um, because it did look as though that the umpires were pointing and trying to do some counting. Yeah. So we are right to get underway for the final term. Just trying to clear a couple of these last kids off the field here at Wongari Oval. And it looks as though the netball has wrapped up uh, next door as well. So I'll try and bring you some scores from there. Umpire raises the ball. We are set to go in the final term here at Wongari Oval. Up we go and Wolford wins the tap down. And I thought taken without, without it was Franklin, but he socket off the ground. Marble Range can't mark it in their own defensive 50. And didn't they come out hard there at the ball, Tasman Imperial, but the ball sits up for Marble Range. Are they going to be able to clean it up or are they just, in fact, someone's gone without it here. And I think that's going to be a free kick going to Todd Owen. A little bit further upfield and it is. So Todd Owen gets the free. Hand passes off and that looks like Josh Slade kicking it. Didn't that sit up in the breeze? Sits nicely for Kyle Castley though. Castley now coming further towards this wing. Low kick finding Lockie Paik. Paik keeping it on the right boot. Low. Keeley's not going to get there in time. Oh, Keeley was just steaming out of the forward line. He could have flattened his opponent there. Here's Jake Stoll with it. Right foot kick is a bit of a mongrel. They're not going to be able to clean that up, are they, Tasmans? Now they get to it and it's Govan. He can't get the ball clear out of the contest and we will have a ball up. Ace merchandise and apparel time clock shows that we have just ticked over one minute in this final turn. Yeah, Keeley, uh, just steaming out there, was, uh, was demanding the ball, but uh, just couldn't get the hands on it. Hand pass away. Plenty of time here for Kyle Castle. He needs to get onto his left boot. It's touched off the boot. Playing on here. That looks like Toby Wright at the back. Gets a right foot to it. And it's going forward, going forward. That's a good smother of the ball on the half volley. That is definitely an eight. It's a, it's a 28. Yes. So we're not going mad as now Jed Wolford sends it into the forward line. Ball pinballs around. Pat Tasman Imperial take it to ground and the umpire calls for a ball up. It might even be that Brock Davis is wearing 28 instead of 26. That's what I'm going to assume anyway. As the ball goes up, Stoll wins it, tries to bring it down. Tasman Imperial first there and set upon immediately by Marble Range. And we will get another ball up around about, uh, around about 25 from home at the northern end, as a matter of fact. Wolford got its tap to smother Stoll's clearance. Billy Bice affecting a good tackle. It's Castley now off the left boot. Kyle Castley drives it low, and Kyle Castley makes it two goals for him, and it makes it 10 for Marble Range on the Curtis's sales and service scoreboard. And this is really getting away from Tasman Imperial now. It is 10-10-70, Marble Range leading Tasman's 2-1-13. Well, Tasman's uh, didn't even hit the scoreboard in the third term, so this is not the start they wanted. Um, of course, Kyle Castley uh, kicked that beautiful curling goal to the southern end mm. earlier in the game. Goal of the day contender and knows where the sticks are and manages uh, to get through heavy traffic and, uh, and found another major. Well, I think the two goal of the day contenders, because he managed to get that through traffic, are probably both Kyle Castley's goals, and it's just a question of which one so we give it to. It's Kyle Castley versus Kyle Castley. Uh, yeah, I wonder what Kyle Castley will have to say about that. <laughs> umpire with it now. Three minutes gone. Ace merchandise and a power time clock as the ball goes in the air once more. Wolford up against Stoll. Stoll wins it clean. And umpire coming back. Someone taken without it, maybe? I'm going to get it free. It's going to go to Tasman's, I think. Yes, it is. So, Habick now with it. And what can Billy do with it? He decides to go out to the left side. 
sending Harris on the chase. In fact, it was uh, not Harris, it was Chase Tucker on the chase, and Chase couldn't chase it down. See what I did there? I'm here all week, try the veal. Marble Range bringing it away down their right wing, continuing on. That's going to sit in the breeze, and they can't bring it to ground with Cody Spry, beaten in the air, although there's a... No, he did call the mark, okay. I don't think Cody Spry held on to that one, but anyway, and that's a terrible kick. Just range. sits in the breeze. And Marble Range, you're quite right, it is all Marble Range already in this final term. We could get to that 10-goal margin by the end. We're only three points there, and we could break it clean. Although, having said that, Tyler Franklin gets onto it. It's a mongrel kick forward, and it beats Price Marshall over the back. And I think Price Marshall will consider that discretion is the better part of Valor, because he did not get a hand to it, so he'll just let that ball bounce across the boundary line. No options there for Tasman's deep into their attack, and... Price Marshall was uh, was nearest to the ball and did go out of play and Marble Range will reload out of the fence. And Brock Davis taking an absolute eternity and now finding Price Marshall once more. Brent Harris on the mark. So they can see that they've got Marble Range pinned down this end. Oh, Lockie's doing all right. Lockie Pake falling back and they're just going to work it along their back line. They come to the left side come, here. Come into his own. Yeah. They can probably get the hand pass moving and they do. Here is Zach Calderwood. He's been very quiet today. <laughs> Jack go, gone. And Bennett takes a bounce, lines up onto the left boot, looking for Billy Bias. He lets it go over his head. In fact, it probably just... Disappointing for him, and the down and the umpire, sorry, will go for the ball up. Gets the ball back from Tyler Franklin. Up goes the ball. It's Wolford and Stoll. Stoll tries to bring it down. Stoll immediately set up on Mike Clements. Umpire says no prior opportunity. So Billy Havick, instead of breaking the ball downfield, will give the ball back to the umpire. Cassie was right over that ball, and then uh, she had some assistance from Hay, which uh, forced that ball up. Marble Range picking up the ball loose at their own end and trying to bring it away now. It's an ordinary, it's a wonky old kick. That cold would have given nice cut. Keeping it in, batted it in, but now it beats everybody over the top. Here's an interesting contest. Frank oh, yeah. without it, and the free kick will go the way of Tasman's there. Greg Schreiber hand passing the ball almost immediately to the umpire, who couldn't get it, and the umpire will throw the ball back. And I can tell you that. Uh, that uh, they are in no hurry there. Uh, Glenn Shriver's in no hurry. A little bit of a grin on his face. Not too keen to pick the ball up and send it back. He's Tyler Franklin. He got under that again. They're getting under it and just allowing the, the wing to do the work. And it was high contact on the Marble Range player. Jacko. Jacko's floating around. He's waiting for it. Yep. <laughs> Todd's not as young as he used to be. Ooh. From the ball? Nah, threw it, didn't it? No. Oh, got the ump on there. The runner. Oh, that could be interesting. Our runner. Uh, oh, well done. Oh, well done, Keeper. Mm. Not intimidated by being out and putting himself out there, is he? Mm. Archer? Mm. Oh. No right foot, sticks. No right foot. Got him. Stripes. Yeah. Tough kick. Oh, it's Tom. Yep. <laughs> We're not giving them an inch, are we? Uh, I'm not hanging around. I've got fucking going on. Oh, I'll give you a cuddle, yeah, mate. Yeah, hey? Yeah, <laughs> You know, like back when we were in college, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, brother Steve. Don't bring yes. that up. <laughs> brother Tim. Brother Tim. <laughs> uh. Oh. 
his uh, foot skills are still good. Slaties. Yeah. Yeah. I missed him any of So like riding a bike in that? Oh, it looks a bit that way. So like you, Adam, going yeah, out and having a kick. Just lace it out. It's a good spoiler. Clements now. It's the hand pass away. And it's a left one. I don't know where that one's going from Archer Perth or that one's gone backward. And now, hand pass away. He's called with Ben Ryan. Called the wood. Coldwood, and that is a slice that belongs at Coffin Bay Golf Club, fair dinkum. Maybe even in a pizza joint, and Lachlan Jennings can't keep it in the free kick, Cotton will go the way of Seth Nassau. Coldwood's intensity has uh, definitely uh, picked up in this, in this fourth term. Either, no doubt, yeah, he's going to be looking for the ball just, just to finish. Yeah, the ball didn't come to him in the first three terms, and he's just going after it now. I think he might have even been moved into a bit of a roving role. Uh, it's like he's going in the middle. Yeah. As the hand pass comes away now, Marble Range still with it, and it's a looping one back. They're holding onto it here, Marble Range. Just playing a little bit of keep away with the hand pass, and now running back onto it, Jackson Bennett, Bennett, left foot, drilling it in low. That's going to sit in the breeze, and Carl Tassley was under it beautifully. Tassley now, what's he going to do? Can he line up and go for home? No, Tassley decides to go short. Nicely taken. Nicely worked there by Tony Keeley. He probably hasn't been able to get into the game as much as he would have liked first one back, but he's going to line up for goal number three nonetheless. Tynan Keeley, pretty much back in front. Distance could be an issue in the course of the win. Let's see how he goes from 40. Tynan Keeley, while well, distance is not a problem there, but it's coming out to the left-hand side going through for just one point. Marvel range, 10, 11, 71. Curtis to sales and service scoreboard. Tasman's 2-1-13. Tasman's bringing it out from their own goal screen. Clearly, uh, inside the attack, what that's allowed Marble Rage to do is to have Billy Bice just sort of lurk off in the distance and just sort of creeps up with the contest. And, um, you know, Tasman's aren't aware of their defence and just catch them off guard. Tasman bringing it out from the Vice Marshall. Hand, almost got into the Marble Range defence. Jackson team. Bennett. Vice Marshall's doing well to stop it. Geordie Clements. Jackson Bennett sends it across. Clements almost kicked into his own. Shriver. Shriver taking the mark. On this left side, he decides to go short, and it's onto the chest of Josh Slade. Slade, hand pass away. Brock Davis, sending him in the forward line. Good effort there. Swing around on the right boot will be Lockie Pate. Pate, deciding to send Keeley on the chase. In fact, it's not quite going to get to Keeley. Of course, Tom Charlton got in front of him to take the mark. And they're all just flowing in now, Marble Range. Charlton, in fact, he looks to play on, does he? He wants to come around onto his right foot. Charlton doesn't know what he wants to do. Yes, no, yes, no. Don't get him voting in the referendum. <laughs> He's Charlton. He slices it out to the right. <laughs> they haven't scored yet, have they? Billy, 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 Billy. Oh, yay! That'd have to be disheartening. Still with 
That looks like it was Billy. He slung the ground by the, by the Guernsey. Is that going to be a sling tackle? It is. And the free kick will go to Tasman's. See what Billy can do, get it inside forward 50. I think he's a bit too far out to score, even with the breeze. He's kicking from the best part of 70. Ah, he's going to try and line up. Okay, this will be interesting. He's going to fill the mouth of blight. If he kicks this, it's goal of the day. No questions asked. He's going to be kicking from 55. It's a big effort from Billy, and it doesn't get the distance. And it's off hands into the behind post, so we'll have it throw in. So what? He, he didn't get a bad piece of it, but it just wasn't going to make it. And Malcolm Blood was at 1976 um, to win the game. He kicked it from like 80 metres or something. Yeah, he launched it. I've seen a video of that. Don't know who's going to be able to kick that far these days. I dare say Malcolm might have had a bit of a breeze behind him yeah. that day. Uh, brought to ground the throw in by Marvel Range. Tasman's immediately set upon it. And the boundary um, and the umpire, sorry, uh, will ball it up. Uh, the boundary umpire ball it up. 14 minutes gone in this final term. And now Marvel Range bringing it away around their own boundary line. Around the right boundary line, I should say. Shriver flies, takes... Or did he get his arms chopped? Umpire says Shriver can have it. Don't know whether it was a mark or a free. Either way, Shriver's got mark, the ball for free. Pape wants it in the middle. Shriver decides to continue going out to that right side. It's like Tom Charlton falling back. And Charlton can't handle it. As the ball is knocked across the boundary line by Tasman Material for the throw in. Shriver started to come into the game now. He's, uh, he's presenting well. He's, he's allowing, uh, allowing himself to get a bit of space and he's, uh, and he's a freeze. Umpire, boundary umpire throws in. Stoll tried to bring it down. Marble Range picking it up. Clements with the hand pass out the back. Finding Shriver. Shriver just taps it away, looking for someone to get there first. I think that was Brett Harris that overran it. And the ball beats everybody across the boundary line. And the boundary umpire will throw in once more. We move along 15 minutes gone in this final term. Boundary umpire throwing in. And Tasman's win it. I think Seth Nassif actually getting a hand to it at the back there. Kick around the body. And that's going to sit nicely. Benny. One, two. Nice effort there from Jackson Bennett. Winds up, going wide. Is that going to sit in the breeze? Oh, it does. It's a beautiful effort out there to Glenn Shriver. Shriver's been big in this term, and he's been big all second half. Now, Glenn Shriver, onto the right boot, going short, looking for Boyd West, and finding, <coughs> finding the coach, not a bad idea, and now there's a problem there. I think that's Toby White going down, so Boyd West can run over the mark and play on, looking for Billy Bias. Good score from behind. Bias isn't going to try and run it down. He'll wait for the hand half to come back. He doesn't get that one either. So Marvel Wayne, you're going to keep it, and then they play up now to Cooper Miller, under the left boot, looking for Tony Keely, stay on his chest. Beautifully done. Nathan Frost couldn't reach it, and Tony Keely grabs it. Didn't have to make too much work of that. It just came to him like a magnet, didn't it? It certainly did. I feel sorry for Nathan Frost. You could see what the ball was doing, but he just couldn't get there in time, and Tony Keely just waited for it to fall onto his chest, quite literally. He's Keely. From pretty much back in front from 35, and that is way to the left. So Tony Keeley can't add to the score. It's 10 12 72. Marble Rain leading Tasman. It's 2 1 13. Curtis and Sales and Service scoreboard. Final quarter score at moment is 8 0 in favour of Marble Rain. Oh, Pack flew. Tasman's could have grabbed that one, and instead, umpire's going to rule in the back because he didn't grab it, and that's the risk you take. So I'll take the mark, or you give, give away the free. Tasman's in real danger of going through the second half. I, I don't see them scoring, unfortunately. Billy Byers taking the free. It's a moment of kick. Very disappointing. And now Marble Ranks still with it. It's uh, left foot up and under, looking for the pack to fly. And why they do, looking to punch it away. Who's there at the bottom? I think that's not from Jennings. Stoll trying to pick it up. Good luck, Jake, trying to fend over that far. You've got nine foot three, and now the ball ends up with Josh Slade. And the umpire says that Josh Slade had prior opportunity. I'm not sure he did, but it's not really going to matter yeah, at this point in the game. It is a 61 point margin uh, in favour of Marvel Range on the scoreboard here. They say 10 13 74. I'm not quite sure how that one works. Uh, I make it 10 12 72, so it should be a 59 point break. Marvel Range is taking the mark on there. What part that play with Billy Hayden? Hey, for now. We're looking for some options. We're not seeing an awful lot in the way, so it's nice to go and see the final thing of Govan. Govan, off his left. Oh, I'm right. It sits up in the breeze. Quick hand pass away from Luke Andrews after he takes the mark. Chicken kick over the top, on Zach Stoll. Stoll's game. 
continuing on down the right side. Good spiraling effort there from Miller. Trying to keep, uh, who's that? Henry Price. Hasn't been very big in this second half. He had some involvement in first. Good mark taken there by Marvel Waves. And have to go back. Yeah, we'll trim there's your the boy again. Then finds it. Tony Keeley. Tony Keeley. Way down the ground. Decides to come wider, looking for Lockie Pate. He picks up the bruiser. And Lockie Pate will take the mark. Stephen Pate. Justin Fled. On our commentary position. Pate. Go back into the middle. And head up now. In fact, Josh Slade decides to kick across. Finding Glenn Shriver. Shriver, is he going to head pass? Yes, he is going to head pass. And Jackson Bennett. Bennett takes one bounce. Onto the left boot. Driving low inside forward 50. Everybody misses it. Jeff Wolford's going to run it down. Wolford can't get a hand pass. He beat one. Oh, Wolford beat slow. two. Got the hand pass away. Was it sling tack on? Five says no. And Tasman's a little bit down. I think the man with the ball down, Tyson Collins, has a good done. He just decides to play off the hand pass wider to Harry Havick. Now that's a good diving mark. He's only up there, maybe? I'm not quite sure who's got that one out there, but they play on now. Tom Harris, I think it was. Into a two on one contest. Paul Wood missed it. And Marble Ray is trying to burst on the Price Marshall. He went without it. Dinking kick into the forward line. Is this going to sit for Seth Nassif? He gets tackled across the boundary line. Still no Seth score Nassif. in the second half. Trying to get into the game, but he quite do it. Really like Jacob Stoll's game for Tasman. He's been working on the age. Wheeling inside just to try and keep him in the contest. We are in time on now at the end of the final term. Boundary on by, gives up, throwing it over his head. And it just goes a cricket delivery. Stole one, it tried to kick quickly. And now onto the ball is Josh Seal, I think that is. I don't remember calling him too often today. That just goes to show how dominant the time is for Josh Seal not getting into the game. Stoll bringing it down now from the contest. Right footer, it's up and under. Who's going to grab it? Tyler Franklin tried, couldn't do it. He tries again with the right foot snap, Tyler Franklin, and that ball will drift through for one point. So, as an Imperial on the board in the second half. Doesn't get on in the third term, but they do in the final term. I don't think my fight. No, you don't. As Marble Range now bringing it away from their own end, and the ball finding Brock Davis. In 28, apparently. I'm not going to let this one go. I'm telling you, Kyle now with it. He didn't change the jersey number. He's still in 10. And now the ball falls. Boyd West can't take it clean. And is Charlton going to be back to black? And the umpire says no. We will have our ball up. 21 goal and 8 merchandise and a power time clock. 59 points, in fact 58 points the margin in favour of Marvel Range. Castling with it. Now hand pass back and that's it. That's all she wrote. And it is full time here at Wandery. And an absolute shellacking has been handed out by Marvel Range to the Tasman Imperial Football Club. 10, 12, 72, 2 goal, 2, 14. 58 points the final margin. Terry? I don't think there's anything much that Tasman's going to really hang their head on there. They'll just dominate there. Well, we describe them as the third challenger to Marble Range and I think the South Carolina side.